Hey guys, Keith Keller, Melbourne, Australia. And today we've got a very special show because we've been doing a series of shows on the idea of Global Social Media Day. It's coming up soon. We've got this brand new event a platform we're trying called Run the World Today. Maybe the coolest URL I've ever heard of in my whole life, runtheworld.today. We have an event coming up on the 30th of June, 29th in the US, because we're always a day ahead. It's always tomorrow in Australia. We're going to be talking about a lot of really cool uh, tech and a lot of cool things about how to promote your business. And that's what today's show is about. What is your favourite way to promote your brand on a budget? And we've got a global audience again and a global team. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Indra and Gail are in LA. And Michaela is in Atlanta, but originally from Prague. So I'm just going to run the room and, and really run through a series of questions now. You can actually call in and, and make some comments yourself if you're watching on YouTube or Periscope. And eventually I've got a sniff that I might get LinkedIn Live one day, one day, and that would be just an extra channel. But um, this is this is what, what we're doing. We're having a bit of fun with this idea of live streaming. We're sharing a bit of knowledge. I'm introducing them to a few of my buddies, and we're going to have an event in a few weeks about this. So let's start with this idea. What is your favourite way to promote your brand on a budget? So we'll start at the top. Indra, what do you think? What is your favourite way to promote your brand and how do you do it? Uh, well, I think one of them is the obvious, which is my backdrop, which I got for $12. And um, basically, um, my husband put a few pieces of wood together and that were just scrapped. And here we have it, this great little backdrop for $12. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. All right, well, let's run the room. What do you think, Gail? Um, what do you what do you think is your favourite hack, your favourite way of promoting your brand on a budget? Well, first, uh, uh, working from home certainly is the big one. But when it actually comes to, to uh, selling my product, um, I, I offer a freebie. And then I offer um, discounts. Yeah. So it's this idea of what we call freemium. You get a little bit of a taster. That's right. You get a little bit of a taster of what you do. And then if you're really into it, then you can, you know, meet for coffee or buy the book or uh, well, get, it, get going. I, I give you a whole chapter of the book in exchange for your email address. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, we call so that a lead that, magnet. That's a really – let's pick up on this. So you've got an e-book. Um, which people you can send people, and then they when they've read it or they're into it, they can then go up the scale. That's that's a very cost-effective way to get the brand out, isn't it? Yes, I, I believe that it is, and it's also very easy to um, to use social media with it because you just take a camera shot of the, of the cover of the book and then pop it in your favorite social media site. That's brilliant. Okay, that's great. Now, Michaela. We we have a, a killer. Oh, we have a killer hack for you. I want you to share this hack in for living color. You know, you you you, got, you tell. I'm not going to spoil your thunder. You tell me what you your favorite hack is. Your favorite way of promoting your brand on a budget. It's got, it's just killer. Um, favorite one is maybe the So like, you can do it from anywhere. You can do it for free. Just pay attention to what people are talking. Uh, about on social media, go through the hashtags that relate to what you're passionate about or what your brand is all about, and answer people. Figure out what the Twitter chat is, what the relevant groups are on social media, and start talking to people. And then people will start talking back to you, and then get engaged with them more and promote them. It's not going to cost you anything if you help somebody with something, but it's going to help them tremendously and they'll remember it so maybe next time you need some help you're asking your audience to promote something they'll be like well i might i might just do that <laughs> I, lo I love what you've said there i love i love the idea that you've helped others first my favorite they've got a couple of power hacks around this idea but, but you know this idea that whenever someone new follows me whenever anyone uh retweets me i always thank them Mm -hmm. Now, it's a very simple, maybe a little bit time-consuming, but the point is it's a simple courtesy that I have created miracles with. 
You know, you just thank someone for retweeting you. They've done you the favor. They've already done the hard work for you. And then suddenly um, you, you've made a new friend. Um, I, I do that in as DMs. I particularly like DMs. But my power hack here to answer the question, what is my favorite way to promote your brand and a budget? I'm using this site called StreamYard which uh, does have a freemium model. It's completely free to use if you don't want to record it. But I do like to record it, so I, um, I use the paid version. It's 25 bucks a month. I can send it to three sites, to Periscope, to YouTube, and hopefully one day LinkedIn Live. I get the MP3. I get the MP4. It looks exactly like TV. And uh, I think we lost Gail there for a while, so we'll bring her back into the uh, to the. Uh, the fold. So that's the first question. The first question is, what's the biggest power hack on based on a budget? But I, I think the bigger question is, is social media really the, the essential element here? I know a lot of people are still not using it as, as well as they can. Would you say this is really the game changer? Would you would you agree with that, uh, Michaela? Yes, yeah, and, you know, the pandemic showed us that it is like we were all of a sudden we all get locked into our little apartments or houses and we were not allowed to go anywhere so that was for many of us the only way how we could get in touch with people communicate with people and for brands to reach their potential and current customers and continue to develop relationships with them so absolutely that's brilliant yeah and what about you gail um Social media is it an essential component nowadays? You mentioned your ebook and how you send out a freebie. Has social media made it a lot easier for you to promote your material? Yes, my book. I mean, my book, yeah. Interview Tactics How to Survive the Media Without Getting Clobbered, right? Yeah, uh, I, you have to, uh, it's, it's mandatory. There is no more, well, I think I'll try it. Um, I hear it's pretty good. Uh, it's it it's it's the it's your it's your new favorite sweater what can i tell yeah. you oh yeah your lucky jumper yep 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 now, always I, always i recently had um uh, the dry cleaner say to me keith look i get you you, you want to keep your new you want to keep your lucky jumper even though there's a little bit of a tear in it and you know you, you many people would throw it away but as you said this is your new lucky jumper i wouldn't give up twitter for a million dollars i mean it's so good isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I get so much leverage and so, so much fun that, you know, no, nothing could le leverage or, you know, me away from, from uh, social media. So with that in mind, actually, Indra, I haven't brought you in. Are you, are you using social media? I'd love to hear whether you think it's an essential part of what you're doing. Oh, we've lost you. Actually, I, I do that. Oh. Um, I, we, I think I've muted you accidentally. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we've got you. So um, yes, and, and an emphatic yes, actually, Keith. Um, I mean, up until it was probably only around January, I started to build my brand. It was probably late January on Twitter, which was very inactive before. And I started around, I think it was around 350 um, followers. And now I have close to 4,000, almost 4,000. Um, and thank you for all your coaching and advice on that because it has really made a difference. I'm getting a lot of engagement. Um, I, I started on Facebook and so I have those loyal people and then a lot of them traveled across to Instagram and Twitter was a new animal for me. So it took a little bit of tweaking and I know we were going back and forth and we still are tweaking things to kind of get a hold of this animal because it's still fairly new. Um, so yes, um, I, I'm really enjoying Twitter. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, since, since you created 4,000 followers in six, in six months, um, are, what percentage would you do, would you say are the followers are mitigated over to you from Instagram and from Facebook? And if it's a low number, how are you crafting your tweets to to magnetize four thousand new top, uh, followers in six months without buying ads, or maybe you are using ads? 
Uh, no, I'm not using any ads at all. I didn't um, think so. Yeah. No. Um, so I would say, um, see, sometimes the people that are on Facebook and Instagram are totally different. Um, and I and I found that out the hard way. And I think I'm kind of experimenting in early in the process. So what I find is that the people that really love the photos and the pictures, the visuals, are Instagram people. And then Twitter people don't really like it if I post too many photos you know across from other platforms um, but they'll they'll like it if there's enough words with it but they really want it they're more readers and so it just took me a while to understand what the difference was um, I haven't paid for any ads this is all very organic but I've tried to post every single day you know like at the same time in the morning um, and then what I have done is consistently is from that post, I've tried to retweet it like eight or nine hours later. And it's pretty rare that I do try to occasionally do a second tweet, but, um, but I found that it didn't really make much difference. Um, so I can get not, not just likes, but also engagement and comments. You know, and I feel like I've um, found my niche. Like I think when you go onto Twitter, you have to have a certain niche and a certain market that you'll. It has to be defined, you know, so that you can get those people interested. Mm -hmm. So, do you ask questions? Um, why do they like you so much? I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I occasionally I don't really. I tried a couple of questions. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, and then I also think it might be also the different times of day. I think some if I post too late in the day, then those people that are connected to me, they maybe they're not on, you know, the globals so that are around the world. I might have missed that that you know that time frame or whatever it is but when they're on. Um, and then I've noticed that you know I, I haven't really. I would say it's probably a couple months since I've really asked questions, Gail. Let, let me, let me pick it. up on that and I'll ask, bring Michaela on this. I've got some really good stats on this. So what you picked up on there is the idea of timing. We know for sure this is the right, the right flow. So somewhere between 6 and 8 a.m., people are on the train or whatever public transport system you have in your city and people are going to work and what are they doing? They're sitting on a train. So they might as well be checking their messages. It's a very, very, very efficient time to get people because they're doing nothing else, unless they're in the car, in which case they can't and they shouldn't be using social media. But if they're on a train or a tram or a bus, six to maybe 6 to 10 a.m., oh, well, I'll check my messages, I'll, I'll respond to my messages, I'll look for new content because I'm, like, I'm stuck on a tin can for an hour. Uh, for us, it's an hour. So uh, between 12 and 2, people are having lunch. They might uh, zip out, get a sandwich, uh, sit in the park, check their messages. Like they might do what people used to do and sit with their friends and talk to them, but they might not. They might just talk to their online friends. And I, I want to run the room and see if this resonates. Between about 4 o'clock, this is a really funny stat, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, people start to zip away and have a ciggy and go into the toilet and think, you know what, I actually want to go home, but I can't go home. So I'm just going to quickly zip away and check my messages because I'm so bored. It's 4 o'clock. I really want to go home. And the other really power hack is between about 6 and 8, after tea, maybe 8 and 10, but after tea, the kids are in bed. Michaela, you probably be able to relate to this one. The kids are in bed, you've had the day, you're just sitting down with a cup of tea or a glass of wine thinking, Look, I'll, just, I'll just chill now and see if I can find where my friends are doing. D does that resonate? I'll start with Michaela. Do those times resonate with what your, your, your work uh, timings and when you would perhaps tweet? Yeah, definitely. When we see the most engagement when in the morning when people are just getting settled, maybe they're sipping their first cup of coffee. And we also... Um, internally use the time to maybe go through our feed and schedule content, put it on buffer and, you know, create a uh, create use. And then you have to, you know, get into all your to-dos for the day. And then, you know, around lunchtime-ish, 
maybe after lunch you're a little lazier, you, you need a little, a little more time to get uh, back into it, so check it again. And um, I like the the thing that you mentioned that people are, they, they start to get a little lazier towards the end of the day, and they just kind of like pretend they're working. So that's another, like, a, I feel like big uh, reason um, to, like another, I guess, um, like a proof of the remote working, you know, system working better because the fact that you're forced to sit at the office for eight, nine, ten hours doesn't mean you're productive the whole time. So yeah. Let, let me pick up on this. I know for sure. I know for sure because I've done a lot of research on this. I've got a very good mate that sells most of his stuff at about four o'clock in the afternoon. About four o'clock in the afternoon is his power hack because he's thinking, you know what, people are at work, they're, they're having that sort of afternoon flow. They might grab a chocolate bar or a cup of coffee, but really they want to go home. They're just a bit sick of it. So lots of women are buying perfume and earrings and shoes at about four o'clock in the afternoon in the toilet. This is a true story. That's a really true story. If you want to set up a business, just set up a business, sell stuff at four o'clock and cater to the people that want to go home and you'll sell zillions of dollars worth of stuff. And this guy's so clever because he, he basically tapped into the humanness of the process. You know, so I wouldn't have guessed that myself, but he just he does. And then eight o'clock till ten o'clock, that power hack where your kids are in bed and you could watch TV or you could just check your messages. And I think after eleven o'clock is also another power hack because you know, wife is in bed. This is when I do it. Wife is in bed. Everyone else is quiet. The house is quiet. I really should be doing the dishes, but I don't want to. So I actually have amazing conversations about eleven o'clock at night. I've, I've I've made that conversation really far into the call so my wife can't see it because <laughs> she really wants me to be off the computer. She's coined this phrase recently, less mouse time, less house time. Yeah, more house time. But anyway, let me let me pick up on those times. Indra, what do you think of the idea of those timings? Would they resonate with you uh, for uh, the, the best times to be using social media? Well, so I like to do it in the morning, so yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like to um, post in the morning, um, whether it's on any of the social media platforms, um, especially I find uh, Twitter very sensitive to morning posts um, and getting a okay. better response rate. LA Instagram, mornings, your mornings. Yes, LA mornings. Um, Instagram I could post at any time of day and still get a good result. Um, and Facebook, again, it seems to be mornings and then evenings, like after 7 o'clock, seems to be like a sweet spot. Wow. Okay. So, yes, I, I really, I've never really done it at lunchtime. I've just either gone morning or later. But particularly with Twitter, I've really focused on my mornings. Okay. Now, did you change your lighting there? There's something changed. Did you put another light on? Or did, did the light go off? The, the background changed. The light may have changed in the house. Don't know. It's, it's maybe it's sun, the sun is setting. Don't know. It looks great. I just wanted to say that you look great. Um, Gail, maybe, what do you maybe think? Maybe You did. You did. I don't did know. I? I just, I just, just, I just noticed something. But Gail, what do you think yeah. about those timings? So we're talking about the most efficient use of social media and why social media is a thing. Did you do you resonate with those times for your personal version of the story? I do. You know, this falls under the category of if you want to, uh, if you want fish for dinner, uh, fish where the fish are. Not oh, where you are. Yeah. So, but I have a, I have a giveaway that I give on my web website, 35 killer interview tactics for surviving the media without getting clobbered. And I loved interest. Um, I like the way she thinks. I, I like that. So I, unfortunately gave myself a challenge for the next 35 days yeah i'm gonna give away i'm going to uh publish on social media like three or four times a day the same um uh the same tweet for 35 days um and see how that works out yeah good idea a so you're going to try different tip. different times yeah, yeah. 
Well, no, I'm going to do one from six to ten, another one from twelve, sometime between twelve and two, and another one between six and eight. Although I may do, yeah, six and eight, yeah, for thirty-five days. Oh wow! And thirty-five? Why thirty-five? For thirty-five days, because it's thirty-five interview tips, tactics, ah, there and it is. techniques for That's surviving right. the media. And so I'll just do one on Monday and two on Tuesday and the tip number three on Wednesday. Yeah. And your Twitter handle is just uh, Gail Murphy. you got your own name, yeah? Yeah, G-A-Y-L, yeah. That's, right. Yeah, that's right, right there. Yeah. Now, um, we've talked about the idea of why social media is important, but I'd really love to know about what social media sites are working. I'll start with Indra because she mentioned Twitter. Um, but let's have a, a really a really good play with this idea. You mentioned that Twitter's working, but what were you doing beforehand and how does it compare? Um, I think before, I mean, I, I had a Twitter account for quite a few years before. I just, I really didn't, um, I wasn't active on it. Like basically I would post something on Instagram and then I would just, you know, um, flip the switch to just, you know, posted across other, you know, to, to Twitter and to um, Facebook. But it wasn't the right type of content, I think, because I wasn't putting any words with the picture. You know, it was just like, okay. so, so that's the thing. Um, I wasn't really active on Twitter before. And now, you know, because I'm making it a morning kind of ritual to go and do that, it's, um, it, it's I think it's paying the results now, whereas... You can't just put it as a subsidiary because Twitter kind of needs some sort of attention as well as the other ones. Um, and then, I mean, the very first site I had was Facebook. So I find that the engagement is just because I know those people longer, you know, like so they, yeah, of course. Yeah. they know me. And then it's, it sort of goes in that order, um, you know, Facebook, um, Instagram, and then third in position is Twitter. Although Twitter is now, you know, gaining more people than, than Facebook now. It's starting to exceed, you know, the number. Yeah, well, can I, look, I want to bring Michaela in on this because she works for a really cool company called Nimble. And uh, I'd be really interested to know if um, w what your favourite sites are uh, and which ones work for you personally and also the company because you've got some cool content coming up. Feel free to talk about how in the context of what you're doing, what social media sites you're using, but what social media sites work best for you? Well, for us as a brand, when we are, and I think it also depends a lot on the space you are in. If you're in B2C or business to business like we are, we sell software. So what we put out on social media is, very much different than from what Indra is doing when she's nurturing her personal brand and yeah, she's yeah. all about connecting, you know, with different communities and it's with, you know, customers, you know, not not, not in other businesses. Um, so uh, we use a combination of different social media platforms and what has worked for us well and also, again, because of uh, the type of the people we are engaging with or trying to build relationships with, which are people in the sales and marketing and technology space. A lot of these people are on Twitter, and Twitter has been like the gateway. So this is yeah. where you don't need a permission to connect with somebody. You don't need to send them an invitation or, or a friend request. Um, you can just follow them. You can sometimes put them in a Twitter list. Um, they don't ever even know and to just you know keep an eye on them and uh, keep yourself kind of um, structured so you don't get yeah. you know, distracted by other things on twitter so starting on twitter and then we kind of take it from there so once you start a relation some conversations on twitter if you when you when we attend some twitter sets of the influencer getting a few conversations we send a linkedin request and for me personally, when I really feel like I've taken the relationship to the next level is when we connect on Instagram and then ultimately on Facebook. Oh, that, look, that's that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So um, what you've said there is that Twitter really is a great place, to, certainly is a great place to link with influencers. 
with people in the sales and professional market. And what we've noticed, I noticed this though, very, very clearly, there's a strong crossover between Twitter and LinkedIn. A large amount of people that are on Twitter are also on LinkedIn. So if you've connected with someone on Twitter, chances are they will have a LinkedIn account and you can you can basically bounce off where they are. You know, as Gail was saying, go where the fish are. And, uh, and that's a really interesting point because I've noticed that, for instance, people on Facebook are typically not on Twitter and Twitter is my sort of playground. So I, I typically don't get much results from, uh, from Twitter. But picking up on that, I want to just run a bit of a pattern interrupt. Um, we can actually watch this show on th uh, two sites now, YouTube and Periscope and hopefully soon LinkedIn Live. I'd love to know where you're actually watching the show. Uh, do you prefer Facebook, uh, Twitter, Periscope, uh, and, I'll, and I'll create a show over there for you. The other thing I'm really interested in is what um, site or what uh, device you're watching it on. I'm really interested in trying to tailor the content to what you need because there's no point me doing content that looks terrible on a phone if most people are on their phone. Uh, which is one of the reasons I love StreamYard because it looks good on all devices. And the other thing, because we're a global sort of family, I'd love to know where you are in the world. So please type that into the comments and I'll punch those in. And this is all feeding into our really cool event coming up on the 30th of June, Global Social Media Day. And you can see there in the banner, the hashtag is Global Social Media Day 2021. We're going to be talking about lots and lots and lots and lots of cool stuff and all these different gadgets that you can promote your brand on and where, where it's going to go. So uh, what I'm really interested now in is, is the idea that we've talked about um, we've talked about social media and all of the different things, but I'd really like to talk about some examples. Uh, do you ha Have you got any examples uh, of when social media has really changed the game? You know, you were doing something and it was okay, and then you tried X and you just went off the charts. So let's start with Indra because you, you, I'd love to hear how Twitter has really changed the game for you because it has. We, we've worked together for the last couple of months and you've noticed a real shift. So what were you doing before and what are you doing now? And can you show me, share, me, share some examples of how that's really working for you? Um, well, before I wasn't really uh, consistent with Twitter. So... I mean, the occasional time, you know, on the weekend, the weekends I, I have noticed are, are pretty quiet, are quieter than during the week. But between Monday and Friday, I'm pretty much diligent of posting, you know, in the morning. And usually I post between um, anywhere between um, 7 in the morning to like yep. and It's sort of like that two-hour period. So I'm posting consistently. I'm also posting at a specific time, like in that time period, and closer to seven o'clock is probably where I am but if I'm running late it's closer to nine so that there's two things that I wasn't doing before I was just relying on um, you know whatever is whatever I post on the other side and just um, you know flag it across which is just a link and it doesn't open up properly you know, it's just yeah you know, can I, can I ask you yeah sorry. can I ask you there um, are you posting organically at seven o'clock and have to remember to do it in between taking the kids to school and uh, making the bed and making some breakfast for hubby and, you know, watching some TV or whatever you're doing, or are you actually uh, scheduling? This is a really power, cool power hack that most people haven't tried yet. Are you scheduling some of your uh, tweets because you've worked out there's certain times that work? Um, no, I'm actually just organically doing it. Um, yeah. I... You know, just because I'm, I'm in a routine, it's usually I'm drinking coffee and um, and then I'll just post a tweet, you know, and just send it off into the universe. Um, so I've got myself into a schedule um, and I don't really post that much later in the day. Like I mentioned, um, another thing that I am doing is I'm retweeting that same tweet. Yeah, uh, yes. Towards, towards the end of the day, which is the you know, the, the 7 to 9 or 10 o'clock, somewhere in that window, I'll retweet that same tweet. So I'm not having to do as much work as when I first started. I'm trying to work smarter. You know, rather, smarter. Yeah, because before I was like, oh, I'm going to post again. I'm going to tweet again. And then I realized that 
I'm getting engagement at, you know, from different people. It's like, okay, well, that's yeah. just a bummer. There's not much happening for me during the midday. I have heard, you know, some people get, you know, get some numbers. But um, for me, it's worth it to just, you know, hit the, the retweet. It's very little work for me. And then, you know, there's a whole new crowd that are commenting and everything else. And um, it, it's it's just, you know, and liking all the likes and everything. Yeah. At the end of the day. Well, so, let me pick up what you've said. There's a couple of really major power hacks in there. So um, the fact that you're doing things organically is really powerful. But this is a really amazing hack for Twitter that I don't think you can do on any other side, and that is you can retweet yourself. Now, why that's important, why, and I know it sounds silly when you say it that way, but if you retweet something at 10 o'clock in the morning and it really worked, you, know, you could, and maybe this is what we used to do, we would take the same tweet and tweet it again, fresh. But you lose all of the comments and you lose all the momentum. So if you retweet a tweet that's working well and there's a whole heap of comments in there, then you're simply recircular. This amazing power hack. I'm so proud of you for thinking of this. You know, this, this, um, this idea of retweeting a, a, a site that's already working, you've got 20 retweets and you've got all these comments in there, some of which you've made and, you know, you add the GIFs and you do this and that. So you're actually you're carrying the momentum forward each time you retweet or each time you tweet fresh, you're starting again. Is that sort of where you're going with that idea of retweeting something and then keeping the momentum going? It's very clever. Exactly. It was, it was, it was just over a period of time I was observing and analysing what was working, what wasn't working. And then, I mean, I just wondered what would happen if I retweeted this, this you know, I just trial and error. And then now yeah. I do it every day, you know, whereas... You know, I was I didn't really know what I was doing at first, but I just kept trying to think, how can I work smarter? Because I see some people that are just tweeting all day and I'm thinking, Well, you know, I don't have that amount of time, but I want it yeah. to be effective. You know, and I want and most to importantly, you know, I never get any comments. Have you noticed they're like they're tweeting but there's no one responding? Exactly. So they've got lots of content but there's no engagement. And in a right. way that's a bit of a it's a bit pointless, isn't it? Well, that's what I think. If I'm going to put a tweet out there, I want engagement. I want likes. Yeah. So the thing is that, um, you know, and it's also about getting the specific good content. It gives me the time to, you know, post something else that's along the lines of my, um, you know, my genre that I'm posting. Yeah. And yeah. quality. And then they're thinking, well, what is she going to post, you know, tomorrow? That's what I'm hoping, <laughs> you know, that they're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Well, I do. I do. I follow. I follow certain types of. And, and just to give you a bit of a power hack for what I do, I'll follow an account for a week, and and if they don't really post anything new a couple of days in a row, well, they've lost my attention because I, I go there every morning and I think, what what have you got for me? Have you got a new article? Have you got a new tweet? And if it's just the same old thing, or there's no engagement on anything, I I, I go away. So uh, let's run the room, Gail. What do you think? What have you got? Some examples of when you used social media at sort of before and after, before you started using it, and now that you are using it, have you got some examples of how it's working for you? Can I ask Andrew a question before I answer yeah, that? Yes, please, please. Um, in all this, in this research that you were doing, where you would do something and then do some research and then figure out if it moved you forward. Where do hashtags fill into that kind of restructuring? Um, did you wow. did you start adding them in, pull them back? Did you have it in the body of the tweet? Did you wait till the end? Okay, this is really an interesting question, Gail, because um, I mean, I find that hashtags for me have worked much better on Instagram than what they've mm. worked on Twitter. I have, I have to say, um, I, I also did the study of, at first when I got on there, I would add hashtags like all the time. And then I would also practice and, and post without them. And sometimes I do a hashtag now and sometimes I don't. And if I do, it's just one or two. But I actually found that it didn't make any difference. If I put wow. a hashtag in, in Twitter, in Instagram, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. On Twitter, it makes no difference at all to who's going to like, who's going to comment on my stuff. 
and also new, new followers. I thought I would get, you know, more new followers from those um, hashtags, you know, maybe on Twitter. I didn't. My new followers, I think, also are getting generated also from um, the people that are commenting on my stuff because I'm getting a lot of engagement now. I mean, I notice that other people are commenting um, that initially... Commenting on the comments. Yeah. Right. So then they're coming Everyone wants to go... Everyone wants to go to a party that's happening. No one wants to be the first in the room, do they? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to be the first one. Exactly. So <laughs> what was your question to me? I'm the, sorry. The question, just, no, the question I, was, I, no, that, yeah. that's okay. The question was, do you have some examples of when you've used social media before and after, you were doing this and nothing much is happening, and then boom, you tried something and it took off? The only boom that I have is on Sundays. I have a, a gal pal of mine who has about a half a million followers and she engages in, um, uh, uh, in uh, you have to put a quote. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so sometimes I'll get, I don't even, I'm not even sure, I'll get a like or something or a couple of retweets, which is nice, but, uh, it, it goes from 10 people seeing it to like uh, 2,000. You want to give her a shout out or, or you want to keep her private? No, I can't remember her last name right now. Um, Marsha. I can't. I'm just so sorry, Marsha. Yeah, I think I know who you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, Think Big Sundays with Marsha. Yeah. What it, yes. That's right. Yes. And we've Marcia met. Williams. Marsha Williams. I don't, I can't remember. I would have to look. If it goes to somebody else and let me look at Twitter and I'll come back and I'll tell you what it is. Cause she's a lovely woman and, and her head is in such a fantastic space. Yeah. But that's the only difference that I see. I, I, and if I, if I, it doesn't matter if I do hashtags or not. And then uh, it, it's always a surprise to me just, just getting on Twitter. But I'm thinking about it as I'm listening to Indra. I'm a very big uh, proponent for social justice. Ah, uh, yes, yes, and yes. I, I work in newsrooms. I'm a newsie. I'm a journalist. And the majority of my postings uh, have to do with um, social justice and also the political drama the, the political Dallas reality show that's going on here that is just so wrong and, and, and out of this world. Um, and it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, but it does. And pick, pick, but it does make a difference when Marsha, who you're going to find out, and I yeah, think on I know Sunday. who you're going to be. Yeah. So you, you, you're on your own and you're doing yeah. your thing and you're sort of mucking around and nothing. It's a big yeah. power hat. Very good yeah. example. And then you suddenly link with an influencer who's a mate and you, and then suddenly you pick up on their audience. That's right. And because there's some synergy there and you're good friends anyway, you're simply bouncing off each other's audiences. Yes. This is a very good power hack and I want to bring Michaela in to see if we've, we've got some similar ideas. And here's the question again. Have you got any examples of when social media has been great for you and in an environment where prior to using it, it wasn't. So have you got any before and after stories so about an event or a webinar or a new product or a new co group of uh, customers coming on board? Have you got some examples you can share of how social media's really changed the game there? Yeah, so we are very intentional in the way we use social media. We first develop a list of the people that we want to develop relationships with. So we have a list of influencers in the sales, marketing, and technology space. Then we find them, identify what um, what social media platforms they are most active on. Oh, very good. Which that happened to me where I really started uh, seeing a huge difference in um, the way where our relationship was and in the way where they started responding to me much better when I asked them to collaborate with us on, you know, webinars or uh, any other events, uh, contributing to our blog, getting quotes, or, you know, many times I end goal is to get them use our product and turn them into our product evangelist. So this week really happened when I finally 
uh, believed our CEO that uh, this actually works when I kind of opened up my um, personal space and I started engaging with people on Instagram and Facebook. So before I was very hesitant and I had Twitter, I was very businessy there, uh, but uh, our CEO suggested that, you know, I could either create a different uh, Instagram, different Facebook, or I could come up with, uh, I could create some uh, compromise, maybe, you know, where I would be comfortable inviting yeah. Yeah. to my personal space. And that's where it really shifted to becoming friends with these people. So when I reach out, they say yes, of course, because we've already been uh, developing the relationship on there. They know about my kids, I know about their kids, and it's a good let me, let, Can I just pick up, this is an extremely cool uh Tangent. I wasn't expecting this. This is an extremely cool tangent. So with LinkedIn and Twitter, possibly you're very businessy. You know, you're at work, so you're talking about work. And it's very safe and you just talk about things and, and it swims along. But you've noticed that when you got personal, hey, my, it's my child, little, little girl's birthday today. Or, you know, you, you get a bit personal, which is, you know, some people don't feel comfortable with. You notice there was a sh huge shift. Can you really play this out? Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, and it's not just about the kids part, but on exactly how, like you said, on Twitter, uh, people are very businessy. LinkedIn is your resume. There are some influencers in the space that use it to um, have great conversations. A lot of people are jumping on uh, what they're sharing and having conversations in the comments. But on Facebook, that's where I feel like I got to really know a lot about a lot of uh, these influencers. Oh, and know where wow. they went. So uh, sometimes I would comment on maybe they share a little uh, their opinion about you know something that has been happening. They make a political statement. And then I can also think, do I want to respond to it publicly in the comments or do I want to make, take the conversation in the DM? And I've, these things that are really important to these people and close to their heart, that's where you can really take the relationship to the next level when you build and yeah. when you reach out to them about something they're really passionate about. It's all, it's also a good way to find people uh, that you might be surprised have similar interests. Like, for instance, many people would probably don't know this, but I'm a vegetarian. Now, that doesn't mean anything in the business world. I'm a vegetarian. I choose not to eat animals, but that's my choice. But suddenly, imagine if I was hanging out with someone online who also happened to be a vegetarian, then suddenly, out of nowhere, you've, you've, like, you've doubled the effect. We're already mates, and they happen to be a vegetarian. Like, so th this is actually quite a clever sort of discussion to have. And picking up on um, Gail, did you, did you remember your yes. friend? Did you find it? Yes, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Marsha, please forgive me because you're probably watching this. Her name is Marsha Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. There it is, Marsha Wright. That's yes. it, Marsha Wright. Yes, oh, so you, hashtag... didn't, you didn't remember either, right? That's uh, right. So if Marsha gives you a hard time, just blame me because I should have remembered too. And yeah. I've been trying frantically to find it too. So Marsha Wright has a hashtag. What is it? Think big on Sundays? Think big Sundays Think with big Marcia. Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very good example of what Michaela was saying. You know, you, you, you've got your own little, uh, you've got your own causes, you've got your own thoughts, and then you suddenly link with someone else who's got a similar idea like Indra would really resonate with Marsha if you haven't met Marsha. You have to connect with Marsha. She's such an amazing person. And suddenly she's got, a, you know, I don't know, half a million followers. And so suddenly those people think, well, if you if you recommend Gail Marsha, she must be all right. Let's go and check her out. And, you, and you're already hanging out. Like you, it's not untoward. You're not manufacturing this. You, you're, you're already hanging out together. And this picks up on exactly like what my... Um, Michaela was saying this this idea that if you find out what causes we're all into let's find the ones that we all resonate with and let's get behind it you know like I'm very big on the environment I'm very big on uh, vegetarianism you know yeah. I'm, I'm very big on you know quite a lot of social justice causes like I can't yes. do everything there's yeah. only one of me but I yeah. you know you, you try and focus on things you can change and suddenly you galvanize people into a into a bit of a club into a bit of a community don't you yeah 
I mean, you don't even have to pick one uh, because you, you, this space is so limited on Twitter. Just the idea of social justice. Um, and then you can, you know, uh, don't, don't be that specific. So you could do social justice and uh, climate change. It's because each one has, um, has so many different points to it that you don't want to alienate um, you don't want to be so uh, not uh, specific that you yeah. a alienate uh, anybody else who's like, oh, well, I feel that way, too. I didn't realize. I just saw you doing this one thing here, like cleaning the beach. Yeah, well, look, I, I want to I wanna pick up on a couple of things. One is I want to say a big hello to my friend Natalia in Rome. This is amazing. Like, it's about 2 in the morning in Rome. And Natalia is watching this Periscope session, uh, and I'm really interested to know, Natalia, what you're doing there. So we know that you're from Rome. I, I want to know, now know what, what device you're watching it on. Are you watching it on your phone with the headphones on maybe so that people, you don't bother people in the house or you've got your laptop set up? Have you got a PC or a desktop or a, do you still have a tablet? maybe an iPad. Um, so um, let us know what you're doing there and uh, what what um, sites, what devices. Now, this is exactly what live streaming is. We're, we're talking to mates of mine from around the world and another mate of mine in a totally different place in the world, Rome, is watching it. Now, don't you think that's the coolest thing? I do. And... Um, I'm just going to run that pattern interrupt again, and then um, we'll get back to the other uh, questions. But so we've we've run the room now. We've run the room on the idea that, um, and I'll, I'll just work you through the questions we've talked about so far. In case you want to recap, first of all, we talked about what is your favourite way to promote your brand, your brand on a budget. We then talked about the fact that social media is probably the most important way now, and we talked a lot about that and which social media sites there are. We also talked about how they differ and which social media sites are best for promoting, and then we gave you some examples. And all of this on a, a really a cost-effective site called StreamYard, which cost me 25 bucks a month to have this TV-quality show which goes out to, you know, 58,000 people. So how cool is that? So why don't we run the room and do a bit of a uh, ring around. It's, uh, it's five minutes to the hour. We can give everyone permission to go. It's very late there for Michaela, so I want to give her permission to go. So let's go first with Michaela. Any thoughts on what we've chatted about so far and anything we can do to um, sort of bring it all together? I love the hashtag. Well, first of all, I love the retweet idea that Indra shared with us. I think it's really smart and I've seen other people doing that and it works. So um, there's Bella Offshore. I think he's the evangelist for Salesforce now and um, he's doing amazing things with his content and I've, I've noticed that he does that as well. So it does work. Uh, and also in terms of the hashtags on hashtags versus Twitter and Instagram, we've also noticed that a hashtag is much more powerful on Twitter uh, on, on Instagram, and when we when we do our hashtag research once in a while, we always type them into the search and then pay attention to the number, how many times that a hashtag has been shared, and that kind of informs us about those that are maybe going out of day. So yeah. Is it yeah. every hashtag you can have on a, on one Instagram post? So then have those kind of separate, but we refresh them occasionally and always pay attention to how much they how often they are used, and they can really, um, they can really show much better uh, engagement. So these are some of the tips that I, I really picked up on. So Andrew, thank you about the retweets. It reminded me that it that it worked. So I'll experiment with it as well. I, I love that. I love that you've, you've do, you're doing the research. You're working out that hashtags do work, but which ones and are they getting old? And one that you might have fallen in love with and, you know, might have been connected with. It might not be working, so you're testing and measuring and you're twisting them around. 
That's really great. Before I go to the others, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do and how people can contact you on the various sites so that, you know, we're maximising your, your, you know, you've, you've given us an hour of your time. Let's give you back some kudos and find some people that can contact you. So how do, how do we contact you? So uh, I work for a customer relationship in Sierra and uh, a software called Nimble. Um, it's, a, it's an app that allows people to build relationships with their customers, store all their information, and it also works with you everywhere. So we have a browser plugin that actually uh, works with you where you work, in your inbox and on social media, so you don't have to leave the place where you're working, and you can log all the information from there to make sure that you follow up with people and follow yeah. up with your relationships. And people can find me on Twitter. Uh, I wasn't able to grab my first and last name because it was way too long. So it's actually M-A-C-H-A under now. So, or Michaela at nimble.com on my email. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So what do you think, Gail? We, we've talked before the hour. What do you think are the main ideas that we've chatted about today? What are, what are some of your highlights from those those six questions and, and how, how can people contact you? There's a couple of questions there, but start with the, the, the wrap-up. Uh, um, what I gleaned from this is, um, is I'm going to do this 35 interview tactics in 35 days. I'll report back to you and let you know if I survived it. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you'll be halfway through it. Actually, this is a very good wrap. You'll be, you're definitely coming to our event. You'll be yeah. halfway through that by this yeah. time, so you'll be able to mention it here. Yes. Um, you'll be able to mention because that's on the June thirtieth. Today is uh, June seventeenth, so that's two weeks away. Yeah, I should have some analytics uh, stitched together. I'm also going to say that you challenged me, so I'm going to make it your fault. I'm going to make okay. it your fault. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just so taken with Indra, 4,000 4, new followers organically uh, in the, from the dark. So uh, just, just really just uh, doing that and uh, processing it on a daily basis. And, and it's one day she would get an answer or it's, would, something would become uh, relative to what she's doing and she'd go, yeah. okay, that's a keeper. And then two days in a row, she can't figure out why five new people followed her that day or liked her that day. And and she was very patient with it. Six months is a long time. 40,000 people is a lot because people are lazy. And unless you are making what you are writing about actually about them, they they won't even... It, it's, you know, it's just it's just human nature. It's very hard to get engagement, isn't it? It's extremely hard. Anyone that can do it has to be congratulated, don't I? Well, the space is so is so incredibly noisy, and to be heard above all the noise, all the garbage of all the noise, is um, is very very difficult. You know, yeah, you could go through it, and you could do ads, and you could do all that. I don't think any of us. You know, I think we still believe in the whole idea of of the process being organic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been on Twitter since two thousand and nine, so um, I'm I'm you know I'm learning all the time. But uh, yeah, and and it's always that little tiny germ of a gem that you hear in a situation like this, whether it's live or virtual, it doesn't matter. Which just goes. Poof, which just blows it yeah. all up for you. Um, and and I'm sure that's what happened with you, Inder, because the universe just responded you in kind to just crazy, crazy down. May, I mean, somebody could be watching this and going, why is she so impressed with just with 4,000 followers? Well, I am. Yeah. I am. Well, the thing that I'm very excited about, and we've met in person uh, Gail, so that's that in itself is a power hack because it's a 14-hour flight mostly over water. Let's just get your head around how far Australia is away from here. But you guys are in the same town. I we're already wait. we're already emailing each other, Keith. We're already we were. that's right, and that's why we connected. But I yeah. can't wait to see that here's me at photo with you and Indra and a big placard on a napkin saying, Hi Keith, you did this. Because what Go we're doing ahead. here is we're actually we're actually connecting the whole world. 
know, if you're ever in Atlanta, you know you've got a buddy in your pocket. You know, if, if Michaela ever comes to L.A., she's got two friends instantly just to look up. Well, that's your new background sheet. You're going to take all those and put on one thing, <laughs> get them all photographed, have it photographed on some kind of a fabric, and have that behind you. And it's going to be you with people holding up um, napkins. Hi, Keith. And that's going to be that's going to be your new background. We're tired of looking at your office. That's your Wouldn't new. That be the coolest uh, variation on that video conferencing hack with Zoom that we have all these people saying, hi, Keith, two, two mates, two mates here or three mates here or here's yeah. a group of us now that are, like I, yeah. I've got this really powerful story. I'm going to come back to you, Andrew, on this, but I want to share this really powerful story. Um, we're, we've been talking a lot of, <clears throat> in recent times about Clubhouse. Clubhouse is, you know, a thing. Facebook's got a version now called Hotline and Twitter Spaces and there's all these different ones. But in 2008... 2008, I did a show on a, a platform called Blog Talk Radio, which yeah. I don't think exists anymore. It might. I, I don't think it exists anymore. But at the time, it was a free radio show based on ringing up on your phone. They would record it and send it to iTunes for you. It had a freemium model, but it was essentially a $39 a month model. You could have a show once a day, for every day, for $39 a month or one show once a week for 20 minutes for free. Right. And 20 and 2008, I ran that show for two years and I remember it was about careers, how to find a really cool job. And I remember a lot of my friends on that show that I met on that show were from Canada and they went to a conference and all of these people who didn't know each other, I'm so proud of this, there was about 12 people sitting on a round table in Ottawa at the annual career conference for, you know, career professionals in Canada and they'd flown from all over Canada to come to this conference and they sat around this table and none of them knew each other but every one of them knew me and had been on my show. That's great. And I thought, here's a guy in Melbourne, Australia, it just happens to me but it could be anyone, here's a guy in Melbourne, Australia who's organised this, you know, community of people in Canada who don't yet know each other but have all been on this show. This is exactly yeah. the premise or the promise of Clubhouse. Yeah. And, and I remember being so proud of that. And if, if you and when you and Indra meet and, and you take the selfie, well, we can all know that this happened here yeah. as a result of some random person on the other side of the world. That's right. That's right. And, and I think that's the promise of social media. That's the promise of social media, that you can meet real people that you might not have met otherwise. Mm-hmm. And with that in mind, what do you think, Indra? What's the, what's the big wrap-up here for you today from all of what we've talked about? Have we got you on mute? Are you still there? Indra. I've lost you. I'll come back to you in a minute because yep. I, I didn't give you a chance, Gail, to talk about your book and how people can find you. How do they find you? Oh, okay. So my book is called Interview Tactics, How to Survive the Media Without Getting Clobber. The Insider's Guide to Giving a Killer Interview. Um, it's only going out the door right now with um, with the ebook. That's right. Yeah. Um, my uh, Facebook name is at uh, Gail Murphy, G A Y L M U R P H Y. Same as on Twitter, and same as on LinkedIn. So um, yeah, I uh, I uh, am a journalist and a correspondent. And I've interviewed over uh, 15,000 celebrities and newsmakers. And so if anyone knows what sells in the media, it's me because yeah, I'm, the yeah, one that's right. that's, yeah, I'm the one that's going to talk to you and ask it's you It's an amazing questions. book. And, in fact, we, we've had people, we, you've actually talked about your book on, on it live on these calls. And you've sold books while you've been on them. I, I just that's I right. remember that. That's people right. on, on the call were actually buying the books. So you're, you're going to be talking at our big event coming up in a couple of weeks, which I'm really excited about. And by then you should have some data on uh, uh, yes. whether or not yeah. your sale, your your funnel is working. Um, Indra, have we got sound now? Or can we hear you now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. We've got, we got you. So what, what do you think the, the okay. real power hacks that we will learn today that we, moving forward? What did you get from all of the discussions and all of the questions that were answered? Well, um, even though sometimes, you know, I've, I've been getting results and everything, 
it was really good to get feedback from everybody here that, um, you know, about their thoughts about, yes, I'm on the right track. Because sometimes, you know, you just keep going and then you think, you know, is this, this is a good idea? But the fact that I got the feedback, that was great. Um, there was something that Gail mentioned about the topic um, that I also want to um, share is that the topic that I um, personally um, tweet about um, and post about is I'm very passionate about. So I don't, I just hope that that comes across. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it is because I'm getting the engagement and it's, it, it's just, it was a surprise. It's a delightful surprise. But I think if anybody has a topic that they're writing about, I think it's really important to be very passionate and to keep learning about it and do your research. And be very authentic with that, yeah? Very yeah. authentic. Very. And what do, you, what do you do, Indra? Oh, what, okay. do you, what do you tweet about and what, what is it? Okay, so, um, I mean, what I do is um, uh, I produce um, uh, uh, online shows, TV, I'm working on feature films, and a pet project of mine, what I have been tweeting about recently is um, the new show that I'm about to launch, um, which is a positivity vibe show. So it's all yeah. about the positive. Now, this is something that I grew up, you know, reading books since I was like 10 or 12. Um, you know, all about, you know, positive insights, being positive. And so it's something very passionate for me. So I wanted to start a, you know, a show, a vibe, and just pull all of that together. So that's what I tweet about. Yeah, it's such a huge, huge, huge market. And need, there's such a huge need. That's yeah. the most important thing. You, you never, ever run out of the need to be positive because, you know, yeah. you wake up every day is fresh. you got to get going again. Yeah. Every single day you have to get going again. You never run out of the need. And I, I'm guessing that Marsha will just love this, won't she? I would yeah. think so. Listen, anybody who's watching this, if you learned about Marsha from me, go ahead, drop her a note, say, hey, I'm a friend of Gail Murphy. She told me to uh, connect with you I and I want to put a quote up. Uh, yeah. And was it big, 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 big new Sunday? Hmm? Big oh, new it's Sunday. A think big. Think big Sundays. Sunday. Think, yeah, think big, big Sundays Sunday. with an S, S okay. on the end with right. Marsha. Yeah. And it's a hashtag Think Big Sundays with Marsha, and I always put uh, hashtag or the real. Uh, it's not the real. It, hashtag. I'm sorry. Um, ampersand at uh, Marsha Wright. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm well, sorry. I think it's, it's the real, real Marsha. It's real Marsha Wright. The real Marsha. That yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going to find that because I do know Marsha. We appear on several lists together, and the, the thing that Indra's picked up on it's such an important point. When you um, when you quote positive people, when you share positive stuff, you attract like attracts like. So yes. Marsha is a person that's going to love this. We love Marsha. You know, it's yeah. a symbiotic relationship. So I'm going to let everyone go because it's getting late there and I, I just wanted to, to thank you so much for being part of this story. We've been talking about how you can promote your brand on a budget and we've talked about lots and lots and lots of stuff and this is all based on the fact that we're going to be having an event very soon. It's completely free to sign up. Uh, hashtag is Global Social Media Day 2021. Still at least 20 places free uh, to, to go there, so please take part in that. And I'm going to go now and, and have some lunch and uh, I'm going to let Michaela go and look after the kids and have a cup of tea with hubby. So thanks again, everyone, for taking part and we'll see you next week for another cool show.